Hi, so in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to get the values of an array into the type system. There are lots of situations you might need something like this, but we set up one here for you. So we have this colors array and it's some special colors for our code base. We have Koopa Troopa Green, Blastoise Blue and Gerudo Sunset. So in our code base, we might have a drop down that users can select some of those things. So we have a select and you know we have some JSX here for those options of the mapping over the colors array up there. And that's how we have that stuff in our code base in the first place. But we have this other function down here to RGB and 2RGB takes in those colors and returns the RGB values. And all this is good and well, but the issue here that we're having is what happens if we have a typo on the input? So you see here down on line 25, we spelled Koopa with one O instead of two. It's okay also if we spell it correctly, but we really would like TypeScript to protect us here from making this kind of mistake. Also, you can see here that we could have typos in the cases. So like if we misspell Gerudo to not have the O at the end, there's no error here that TypeScript is showing us, and it could. There's a third kind of error, which is, well, what happens if we forget to mention one of these cases altogether? And another way of phrasing that is, what if we had another case here in our array that we added? So if we added Jigglypuff Bubblegum as one of the colors, well, you know, we don't have a case here for Jigglypuff Bubblegum, and TypeScript doesn't seem to mind. All of these things, if you can believe it, are things that we can solve using TypeScript and uh, yeah, Roman, <laughs> welcome. How would you how would you go about this? Where would you start to try to fix this? So yeah, right now we have a string for the color type and um, I guess we can get the values for a color type that we want uh, by of course just uh, copy pasting the strings right here because we can just use uh, strings as literal types. So I'm going to use a union because our color can be one of these three values. So smart. I'm just gonna copy paste all of these. And yeah, now it works. We get an arrow at the bottom. And uh, I think also like if we remove the case here, ah, oh, we don't have so, the return type. Yeah, so if we hover over to RGB, uh, we see that the values are, you know, just those particular things. If we remove one, the values, it changes to or undefined. So we can get around that a lot of ways. There's a thing called assert never and all these other things. But the simple way we're going to use in this video is you can just set a return type on the function. Usually return types are not really great to use, but it's OK. We'll make an exception for this case. And we see here that because we typed it as string, if we remove this, now we get an error saying the function lacks the right return type because it can also return undefined. Yeah, right? There's now a path where it won't do anything, just return nothing. Perfect. And then I see, yeah, on line 25, we have our error when we misspelled Koopa. That's good. If we misspell it, let's try to misspell it here. Yeah, if we misspell it in a case, that works too. And uh, what else? If we misspell it up here, that works. But there is a problem. We now duplicated all this data. Yeah. So if I change something up here, there's no error anywhere, no new error, and there should be. And uh, Or if I add Jigglypuff... Uh, let's add Jigglypuff Bubblegum. That's not represented now in your type. So now you have to do a lot of legwork to keep these up to date. So it's cool to see where we might be able to get, but how can we do this more generally? Yeah, so I know that to reference uh, the type of a value, what we can do instead of uh, doing this is uh, we can use type of. Just, just going to get us the type of the variable that we reference here. So it's like a special TypeScript operator. Oh. So yeah, that gets us a string array. Oh, OK, yeah. So the, that's not really going to work, though, because uh, we need we need to have the individual values, not the array itself. Right. We are still kind of missing information from this type because it just says string. So we can never really get any information about if it's comparable or if we checked all of the cases. So what we need to do is uh, we can use these keywords as const. And that's going to tell TypeScript to get us Great. more type information into this variable. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see that. So now we have two slash showing us that the type is Koopa Troopa Green, Blastoise Blue, Gerudo Sunset, but it's not a union like we want. We're kind of uh, still having an array, or an, I guess it's in TypeScript called a tuple in this case. That, that doesn't really work for us. So how do we get those individual values? Right, so um, I guess, yeah, we have type of, type of colors now here. Um, I mean, to get individual values of an array, which works in TypeScript kind of like the same as in JavaScript, we can index it. So we can just use these array brackets and then pass a number in there. Mm -hmm. And so this way you can see uh, Koopa Trooper Green. Now we have like the first value, but we still need the other values. So I guess it's like 
kind of like copy pasting it again. So just gonna make a union and then pass one, and then make another union and then pass two here. Okay, all right, I, I see you. That's better. We we get the right type in the end, right? We have Koopa yeah. Troopa Green and Blastoise Blue, and they're all an array. I'm sorry, uh, they're all a union of strings, and that's cool. We still have the problem, right? Of course, if we add Jigglypuff Bubblegum up here, it's not gonna work and it's not gonna be updated. So right. can we shorten this somehow or make it better? Yeah, so we have used a union right here. And um, one thing that's definitely different to, to JavaScript, uh, what we can do here is we can actually also pass unions into these array accessors. So we can just get rid of these cases and then we can just do zero or one or two. And that's oh. going to produce a union of the values as well. So this is just a little bit shorter. But we still okay. kind of like have the same problem, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it has the same exact problems, but it's a lot shorter. We're like getting towards something more general. So if you think about it, what we need is a union of all possible numbers. Yeah, so a union of all possible numbers, I guess that will be the number type because mm -hmm. we can't really uh, spend all day typing all of the numbers. So let's just try passing number into, into it. Great, two slash sit stayed the same. We have all of that stuff in there. I think this is it. Why, so why, how does this work? Why does this work? Yeah, so really the, the way that we arrived here is pretty much the solution because the number type is, you can really imagine it as a union of all of the numbers. So because we are doing this and because we can pass unions into the array accessor, we are really just going through the array, through all of the different slots or uh, indexes, and we're getting all of the individual types and then putting that into a union because number pretty much works as a union of all numbers in here. Wow, beautiful. Let's check all of our cases again. So we see now on line 25, we have you know the right thing happening. We should be getting an error there because we misspelled it. If we suddenly spell it correctly. You need another O on the on the tropa. You oh, actually oh. have the typo at a, at a, in the second word. Oh, oh there's two it's O's. Tropa. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tropa, yeah, okay. So <laughs> good. See, type shift caught it. Yeah. So if we spell it correctly, we see there's no error. But if we misspell it, the error comes back. And that's what we want to happen. If we misspell something in a case, well, TypeScript is going to tell us that this type with one O, Copa, <laughs> Trupa, is not comparable to the type that we gave it. So that's cool. That case works. If we misspell something up here, let's get rid of an O. Yeah, we see that we have the same kind of error, right? This is, t this is actually uh, exactly what we want to happen. Okay. And also if we remove a case. Yeah. If we remove a case, we get an error here because the function now returns, like if we hover over to RGB, well, it's supposed to return string, but it's saying it could also return undefined. And then the same thing goes here. If we add uh, Jigglypuff Bubblegum, again, we get an error because that case is not set. So if we have here like case Jigglypuff Bubblegum, I don't know what color that would be. But anyway, we, uh, oops. You need to, yeah. Yeah, we can, we can put it there and then that error would go away because we handled Jigglypuff. So, and by the way, the reason it's known in the community as T number, you know, this little trick is because usually T represents some kind of type here. So you would have like type T equals something, and then you end up saying T indexing it with number. That's how this Com gets Commonly used. in like generic functions or methods. Yeah, exactly. As a variable, basically. Cool. Well, anyway, that's all for this one. We're going to be doing a lot more short videos like this. If you have any other questions, you want to go deeper, or if you have more topics that you want to see covered in this kind of fashion, please let us know. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.